Welcome to this quick update video for Flow for Spring Cloud Data Flow. Flow is the UI extension that gives you a visual way to build your streams in the Data Flow UI. So the installation process, same as it's been for recent versions, jump onto the Pivotal network, look for Flow for Spring Cloud Data Flow. Uh, there's an installing Flow page which shows you how to take the zip you can get there and apply it to your Data Flow distribution. Once applied, when you restart Data Flow, Instead of the standard UI, you'll get the flow enabled UI, which gives you some extra widgets like this create stream here. So this is probably familiar to people who've seen flow before, uh, but just a quick tour for people who haven't. You have a text box where you can type in DSL, and it has content assist, if that's the way you want to work. Um, we have a palette of applications that have been registered with Spring Cloud Dataflow. This includes the built-in ones and any custom ones you've registered. And a canvas where you can take those elements and use them to build streams. So I can just simply drag out a time and a log and then join them together. You'll see it warns you if it needs a connection before it's valid. And the text box updates dynamically to stay in step with what you're building. Um, you didn't used to be able to build links yourselves, but uh, we've given you the control now. If you don't like drawing links, you can just turn on auto link. And then when you drop something, if there's only one thing it can connect to, then it'll be joined up automatically for you. Uh, we have a grid if you want to lay things out nicely. Uh, and we've always got that layout option. What's new? The nodes look a little different. I'll get to tap port in a minute, but um, properties I want to talk about. Uh, it used to be that when you selected a node, the properties popped up from the bottom as a very dumb key value setting thing. It's now a more sophisticated dialog. Here you see all the properties I can set on the time node. You see um, tooltip information kind of on what that property is for and default values. And this, So this means if I don't set it, it's going to be zero. If I do set it in here, close that, you'll see it's filled in here. I can edit it here if I want. The graph stays in step. Go back to the graph, you see it's 50, and set it back to the default, you see it disappears again. No need to specify it if you're supplying the default. Um, so that's properties view. I can set the name of streams now in the properties view, which I couldn't do before. You'll see you get a visual representation of the stream name, and it updates the text box. What else can we do? Let me drag out a transform and a log. See how auto link is going to send me a little bit of time here. Um, it used to be that if you were tapping, then what you would have is, say, the master stream and then three taps. Those would be four separate lines in the UI, but now they are connected together if you're tapping them. If those three taps are tapping into the master stream, they are visually connected. So this transform needs an input. We're going to connect it to the tap output of time. So the DSL text is updated to say I'm tapping into the foo stream time module. Um, if I still need to build an explicit tap, I can do that using this node. Um, you would need that if what you wanted to tap into was not on the canvas. Maybe it was a stream you created earlier. But if you want to tap into something on the canvas, you can connect it right up. It makes it much clearer what's happening. So let's do some work with this transform module. It takes a spell expression. I'm going to... Uh, change that to be substring 15. So what that does is it, so this computes a date and time entry. This will just pull out the seconds, just the seconds. Then I'm going to use another module that's actually new in M3 called Scriptable Transform. This is not flow, this is just new in Spring Cloud Dataflow. I'm going to exploit it in, in flow. I'm going to log from there. This is going to tap into the transform actually. So this is producing a date time string. This is producing a number of seconds from that date time string. This is going to operate on that number of seconds. So this is like the other properties view, but some of the properties are more sophisticated. So it takes a language property, which is, there actually it's an enum of four values you could specify. I'm going to use groovy first, and a script property. And this is a, it's not just a text box, it's actually an editor. So I can write some groovy code in here. And you'll see I've got syntax highlighting based on my language choice here of Groovy. So a couple of things happened while I was building that. You'll see this stream got a name. That's because the tap here needed this to have a name to tap into. So you'll see it called it stream2. Let me just fix that. Call that something else. Bar. That fixes the stream name and the tap. And you'll note that that Groovy code I typed in has been captured here 
as a single script parameter. It used to be that if you were doing something like writing a Groovy script, you would have to manage that in some way, either by having a, a file on disk that you build into your custom module, and if you change it, you need to rebuild your custom module, or it's stored in GitHub somewhere and you refer to it by reference. Um, but here, you can keep the script directly in the DSL and work on it directly in the DSL. So uh, if I open this again, I get this nice editor for that stuff. And you'll see why that edit is important in a moment when we do something else. Let me just uh, get a prettier graph up. I'm going to use that guy again with another log. And we're going to tap into the same thing again. But this time we are going to write some JavaScript. So this is going to double a number. And we're going to double the payload number, which was number of seconds. Now, did you notice that? This is not just giving a syntax highlighting. We're actually running a linter over this to try and help you make sure you get the code right. So if I made a mistake, like leave out a semicolon or a, uh, a curly bracket, I get warnings and errors here. Not later on when I deploy it, the module blows up with a, well, that script wasn't well formed. You get to know about it here, so you can fix it here. And you see, this is what I'm talking about. Um, you could work on this multi-line script in here. You'll see the new lines have been escaped. Uh, but it's obviously much nicer to work on it in here with a linter to back you up. So that looks good to go. Let's deploy that, press create stream. I'm going to deploy all these. I need to name two of them that didn't get names as we were working on them. So they're all created. And they're going to take a while to deploy because it's starting a boot app for each individual element here. Let me jump to the command line and see which ones are interesting. So uh, foo was our first stream, which means foo.log should be uh, our date time stream. Let's wait for the app to start up. That's working. The other ones are interesting. The bar.log, that was just where I did a spell transformation to be the number of seconds from that string. That's working too. And then I did a groovy one. That was just putting this colon colon between two streams. Two stream results, the number of seconds. And then I did a JavaScript one. This is one where I was doubling the number of seconds. So that's all working. All my streams are working. So with that, uh, enjoy. Flow for Spring Cloud Dataflow.